Hello everyone and welcome back to World of Warships with Captain Keys. Today we're going to be looking at uh, one of the scenarios that's been around for a little while, um, I believe for about a month now. This is, in spite of what the IDS null name is telling you, Defense of Newport Naval Station. The, the um, title there is just a bit of a replay bug. This is a uh, player versus environment scenario that you can play with a division or with seven random players. Which, sorry about my phone there, which is pretty much what I'm doing here, is I'm playing with a bunch of random players, um, with the exception of my division mate in the Nuremberg, that's Jacques Cartier. He is a member of my clan CB and a common colleague of mine on World of Warships. Now, I'm in my Cleveland, um, and I happen to think this is the best ship uh, for this scenario. To give you a little bit of a background, um, I don't have any premium time uh, in World of Warships. I don't pay for a premium account. I don't buy doubloons. Um, I just, I was looking over how much money I've spent on this game and well, it just made me very uncomfortable. Um, just got married, need to save up for some other stuff and it just doesn't make sense for me to spend more money on this game right now. Um, it's a phenomenal game, nothing against Wargaming. Um, I have sunk a lot of money into this game, more so than any other game I've ever played, by a factor of about 20. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's bad. Um, but, <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't regret doing that, I don't think, um, but I just can't spend any more. So how does that relate to this, Jacob? Well, the uh, scenarios are special in that if you manage to complete all of the secondary objectives, then you will unlock 24 hours of premium time. And I have really been wanting some of the higher tier cruisers. I have the Des Moines, um, I'm up to the Ibuki uh, on the Japanese line, and the Chapayev on the Russian line, and I want the Moskva and the Zhao. However, grinding those ships takes time. And, um, well, I wanted a premium account to help out with that, but I'm not spending any money on one, so... I found out that you can get a premium account this way thanks to MCAT, who I've featured in other replays, told me about it. So I decided to give it a try. However, I happened to give it a try for perhaps the worst possible moment. Defense of Newport Naval Station. Well, let me put it to you this way. Having played the other ones, which is escorting a carrier and some other stuff like that, this is the hardest one I know of. Um, and so, yeah, uh, it is very hard to five star this. And it's going to get even harder. You see why? Yeah. Reconnaissance reporting. Second attack we just lost our Nuremberg to a Yubari in the opening wave. <sighs> he says sorry, team, but... Uh, man, I mean, come on. So that made this a lot more difficult. Jacques down there in the Nuremberg was also face-palming. We were on voice chat at the time and talking about how we were going to do this. So the secondary objectives are that you have to protect every support ship and every onshore installation at Newport Naval Base. We cannot let any ships inside of the big green circle that you see before the main attack starts. And the countdown is bugged in the replay. It actually had a timer that was counting down, but you can't see it in the replay. We have to ensure that at least three of our own ships survive, and we've already lost one in the opening wave, and we have to destroy all of the enemy ships before the main attack starts. This is a very, very hard scenario to five-star in a division that knows what they're doing, never mind random players. However, we have a couple of things on our side. Number one, Jacques is a maestro of the Nuremberg, especially with the 360-degree turret rotation buff um, and the high-explosive penetration buff that it got. The Nuremberg is very good for these scenarios. I push the T key, which in the Cleveland is the plane murder button, and well, yeah. These tier 5 planes from the Zuiho just start melting. Uh, there's six plane kills so far this game, I'm shooting up some more. I have my Cleveland fully spec for an aircraft, by the way. I have AA Guns Mod 2 that extends the range, I have advanced firing training that extends the range further out to that lovely, lovely 7.2. I have uh, basic firing training, which gives you a 20% buff. I run, generally, not this game, but generally I run premium defensive fire. Uh, this thing is a plane shredder, and I like it like that because uh, carriers bother me. So, just me. I'm not a carrier player, but I do know a good one when I see one. And our carrier driver, whose name I'm not making this up, is Samoan Love Pump. Just going to let that one hang for a minute. 
Samoan Love Pump in the carrier is going to carry us this game. Jacques does a great job in the Nuremberg. I am the top scorer in the Cleveland. But Samoan Love Pump is what allows us to five-star this game. Um, and that's really what I needed. I needed five stars to get premium time. If you get four or three or two, you get some flags or something. I really wasn't interested in those. I really wanted to five-star this for that juicy, juicy premium time. So, yeah. Um, losing in the Nuremberg right off the bat wasn't good, but we've all sort of rallied. The Ichizushi, uh, Ichisushi, Ichisuki, Zucchini, whatever it is, is very much getting grilled right now. Um, he is about to go down. The Kaiser has taken some big hits, probably from the War Spite to my southwest. We take down the Ichizushi. I focus fire the planes, which you can't see in the replay, but I do. Look at that. Samoan Love Pump on them with the fires. And already the third attack has begun. Ah, uh, great. So, I take stock of the situation while I'm wearing out this carrier. The Kaiser's almost gone. Carrier's burning. Um, our ships are in pretty good shape. I haven't looked at Jacques' health lately. I get a Citadel penetration on the Zuiho with HE. Uh, Low-tier Japanese carriers never change. And then I start working on the Kaiser. The Nuremberg, by the way, very good choice for these scenarios. Very long-range, very accurate guns. It's thin, it's fast. It has torps, which I'm going to say are for emergency use only, but it does have them. Um, and you'd be surprised at how often you need to use them in this type of scenario. Um, and, yeah, it's actually pretty a pretty good ship for this. So, you know, uh, props to Jacques for bringing it and playing it well. A little sip of water there. So now, we have the third attack coming in. I'm taking stock of the situation. Um, our carrier is... Look at where he's parked. Do you see him right there? I mean, like... Most carriers sit back there with the Liberty ships and then wonder why their team's dying around them. This guy took no prisoners. I mean, he was cranking out strikes as fast as he could. So I know um, we have to bring this wave down pretty quickly before the carrier arrives. Now, the carrier will spawn in either E10 or J5. And if your carrier isn't on the ball, you will not five-star this mission. Period. End of discussion. You need a competent carrier in a Tier 6 carrier. Ryuju or Independence, either one can do to five-star this mission. If you don't have that, you will not five-star it. Period. End of discussion. There is no other way. You simply cannot stop this many ships from coming in while still splitting your fleet wide enough to cover J5 and E10 because you don't know which way the uh, carrier is going to spawn. Your friendly carrier, that is. Uh, and if you don't save him, you don't five-star it. So we wear out the Alba, take him down first, Jacques gets the kill on the Nuremberg, and now we start working on the Miyoko, which is, in my experience, the most dangerous ship in this um, wave, because he has the most armor, he has the most health, he has a dogged determination to run full speed ahead right across the line just to spoil that objective for you, but our combined team firepower uh, is able to hurt him, he's already used damage control, he's on fire twice, everyone's shooting at him, Jacques, the friendly Cleveland, myself, we're all wearing him out. Uh, meanwhile, Samoan Love Pump and the Carrier is retreating back to the Liberty ships, which is the right call, because these guys are getting a little too close, um, and he doesn't want to be taking any unnecessary damage. We finally wear out the Miyoko, and then I see the Gaeta and the Fubuki, and I see the Hatsuharu on my right. So I start working on the Fubuki. And again, I, I can't tell the time at this point, but we have to, I believe, finish off this wave, wave before... I think it's 10 minutes maybe on the game clock at the top right um and if you manage to do that then uh the carrier friendly carrier will spawn now here's the problem the friendly carrier spawns with a i believe a 155 mogami and a hipper on his tail and they spawn about three kilometers away from him he will go down in about mm, 30 seconds left to his own devices here is why you need a carrier you cannot get yourself all the way up to E10 or J5 while countering this wave and keeping them out of your base. You just can't. There is no way to do it without a good carrier, and I stand by that. Um, I'm sure someone's going to post in the comments or post a replay of, well, my division of nothing but Anshans managed... Yeah, I know, maybe you managed to do it once, but for all practical purposes, it's not going to happen. Hit the Fubuki with another punishing salvo, but I see the Gaeta still has his engine up, and I want to take him out before he crosses the line... Oh, this is tense. I hit him with 8 out of 12 shots, but it only does 5,000 damage. Come on, kill him, kill him. Thank you. Warspite manages to punch his ticket. 
with about 26 seconds to spare, I think. All right, so I immediately and furiously start pinging J5, and I say, save the carrier. And I'm typing something else in chat when Simone Love Pump says, I'm there. He knows what's up. He knows he has to go help. So he sends his torpedo bombers over there, and this is how we managed to five-star this mission. His contribution right here is what did it. And I said in chat again, friendly CV, you have to bail him out. And he knows this. Um, credit to him as a great uh, carrier driver. So there's the Romeo carrier. Look at his health. Just watch this. He's got a Hipper and a Mogami behind him. They've spawned in, and look at that. He's already lost about 10,000 hit points, just like that. And just, these guys just rip him to shreds. Um, but, oh yeah, and now the main attack starts. Notice that I'm ignoring the main attack, though. I'm really not interested in dealing with them, because again, you have to save this carrier if you want a 5-star, and all I care is about a 5-star. If I win with 4 stars, this is useless to me. I'll make a little money, but I want my premium time. So the carrier is already close to half health. He's on fire, but look at the Mogami's health. Samoan Love Pump hit him with like six torpedoes or something and really managed to rattle that Mogami's uh, cage. Then the carrier comes in and set him on fire, and the Mogami had used his um, damage control to put out the flooding or handle the flooding, and now he's double on fire. Again, thank you, Friendly Carrier, for doing this. That is why we were able to uh, five star this because he took out the Mogami quickly. Carrier's down to about a third of his health. He is on fire, but we do manage to kill the uh, Mogami. Actually, the friendly carrier, or rather the AI carrier does that. And I start working on the Hipper. Hipper's at full health, pumping out 203 German HE with that very, very good penetration into the back of the carrier. The carrier is still on fire. He recovers some planes, but he can't launch anymore while he's on fire. Friendly torpedo strike coming in. I couldn't tell if that one, uh, who that one was from, but it does a good amount of damage. Oh, that was from the Lexington. And I know the Hipper has used damage control, so I'm trying to get some fires on him to burn him down quickly. We need rid of this guy so we can turn around and start focusing on the main attack. Get a, I get double fire on him, which is RNG saying, you may have your fifth star on this operation, but I'm still very nervous about the Lexington. The Hipper is going full speed ahead, doesn't care about his own life, is desperate to stop us from getting that fifth star, and oh, the way Wargaming programmed the AI in this, they're just... They'll throw ships away just desperate to stop you from getting those five stars, and it really frustrates me uh, when that happens. But what are you going to do? Their game, their rules. But the Hipper's on fire in three places. He can't do anything about it, and so he burns to death. Now, I look at my positioning. I see all the crap that's coming this way, and I know what I have to do. These are two Tier 7s, the Scharnhorst and the Miyoko, and all that's left is me and the Cleveland over here. I'm at a little north of half health, and I realize we have to bring these guys down. We have to hold this flank. Um, our Warspite is caught out in the open and manages, or rather, gets himself killed by the Scharnhorst. I, I don't blame him for it. He did stall them for quite a bit and did a lot of damage this game, so fair play to him. The Lexington goes for what looks like a dive bomber strike on the Miyoko, and I'm working in on his side. I'm trying to get some armor piercing on him. Maybe I can get a Citadel, so I pull in and I slow down here waiting for him to keep going forward, um, and he'll have to show me some broadside as he does so. Let him have it with the AP. Disappointing volley of only 3,000. I'm trying to get a Citadel, but I guess he's not. He's angled a little too much. He starts shooting back at me. 2,000 damage volley. RNG is not helping me out here, so I fire everything I've got at him again. And still no Citadel, but 8,000 damage there, and he just sails straight into the Cleveland, and I just I have to bail. I have to engage this Sharnhorst. So this is where I knew I was going to throw my ship. I knew I had 15,000 hit points, but there's a half-health Cleveland there. And if he tries to engage this Sharnhorse nose on, the Sharnhorse is just going to tear him apart. Our carrier has got his hands completely full dealing with the Geniza now, and I know what I have to do. There's just no way around it. I have to stop this Sharnhorse no matter what it takes. I thought about ramming him, but I only have 35,000 maximum hit points, and he has 56, so it wouldn't have killed him, and he would have just repaired the flooding. So I try and set some fires, that doesn't work. I turn around, um, try and pull back, and uh, get some more guns on him. He hits me in the rear, does more damage. I'm down to 11k health. The Cleveland hits him. I hit him and set a second fire, meaning he'll use his damage control. His guns are aimed at me, he fires at me, drops me down to 10 and a half, sets me on fire. I can't do anything about it for 10 seconds, I'm just going to have to burn. And then I know what I need to do. I've got to throw my ship in order to stop this guy. All that's left is the Izumo and the Gneisenau, and I have to stop this Sharnhorst. If he breaks through here, 
He'll have straight shots onto the St. Clair and will miss the objective. So I put the Cleveland's armor-piercing DPM to work. German battleships have this little strip of armor right above the hull plating that you can penetrate with 155 uh, AP. And look at the DPM. 2,000. 3,800. Then I hit him again and again. More damage. 3,200. And then 1,500. And I've almost got him down. He's burning. I fire my final salvo. He manages to set me on fire. And then he gets one more round away with his main guns and sinks me. So I'm out of the fight. And so is the other Cleveland. Now remember, one of the tasks is you have to have uh, three of your ships survive. So we're down to three ships. And our Nicholas is on perilously low health next to a tier 9 battleship. Oh, he takes a hit. He's down to 515. If he gets tapped by either of these ships, he's going to die and we're going to lose it. I try to tell our friendly carrier that he has to chain floods on the Izumo. Um, I think he knows this, but the Izumo is sort of the boss fight. He says, aye aye in chat. Uh, Izumo's focused on that battery. We're about to bring down the Geniza now, thanks to Jacques' uh, precision HE fire. Izumo takes out the battery, and so now he's going to start swinging his guns around. Now that's a full health Izumo, though. Set a fire on his nose. Jacques continues to pound him with the precision German HE and at great penetration. Here comes a Samoan love pump in with the uh, torpedo bombers, and he needs to get a hit on the nose to guarantee a flooding. And I instruct him in chat, wait for damage control before you send your second wave. Not realizing that the second wave coming in here is from the Lexington. Good hit on the Izumo, takes out about a third of his health there, definitely causes a flooding. The AI drops his bombs, or his torpedoes, and look at that spread. This Izumo is going to take a hit. And I said, that's all. The Izumo, I'm looking over here at what this Yubari and Tenryu are up to. Izumo takes a massive hit there, and then kaboom! Samoan Love Pump with the KO in the dive bombers there. And we managed to take out the boss fight. And at that point, I finally breathe. <laughs> I mean, wow. Um, yeah, I checked the base. All the depots are good. I look, we have three ships alive. The carrier is still alive, which, by the way, it's not enough just to get him back to your base. You then have to defend him. If he dies, um, then you lose the mission. So all that's left is this Tenryu and the Yubari, but we have um, friendly support coming in in the form of AI, uh, Missouri, uh, Indianapolis, a bunch of other stuff up north, and some to the south. I'm inspecting the base. Good. No damage. And I can relax. And then I notice our Nicholas, and I'm like, no, 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 don't run out there and fight them. Um, he says, I can't do much more with 500 HP. I'm like, yeah, don't shoot. Don't shoot. Let Jacques and the Nuremberg, let the batteries, let the AI ships handle it. Do not get yourself killed, because if you do, we won't five-star this thing. And I really wanted my premium time, so... Much to my pleasant surprise, this team did in fact manage to five-star this mission. We completed all secondary objectives by the skin of our teeth, <laughs> but we did manage to do it. So uh, well played all around to everyone involved in this. Samoan Love Pump in the Carrier, Jacques Cartier in the Nuremberg. Thank you both for giving it your all this game um, because we managed to do it. And on these scenarios in general, thank you to, uh, to Wargaming for putting them together because... I think they're really well done. Um, I like this one. I like the upcoming Dunkirk uh, evacuation one that's I think went off of uh, public test just a little bit ago. There are some really nice um, nice scenarios here, and I think Wargaming has done a great job with them. So if you haven't tried them out, uh, give it a go next time. It's a lot more fun in Division, I think, but uh, it can be fun nonetheless. So anyways, thank you very much for joining me today in World of Warships. This has been Captain Keys. Good luck and fair seas.